in a typical urban shopping street zone for retail, uh, what is the front yard setback? So, all right, we're talking in a typical urban and shopping retail uh, front yard setback. So zoning codes often will tell you, uh, you know, you can't build within say five feet of the side yard or you can't build in the, the 40 feet of the backyard. And uh, that uh, creates a, a sort of way that most of the structures in that district will sort of follow as a general set of rules. And those rules are there in order to uh, kind of create a sense of density, a, a certain scale. Uh, so that people feel uh, in a housing district that it feels like housing and that they it feels appropriate and there's places for kids to play and things like that. Uh, but then in other more downtown, more dense uh, places, it feels appropriately dense. Uh, and an urban shopping uh, retail area uh, would be one of those density spots. So imagine you're in a city and an urban setting uh, and you are standing on the sidewalk and how far away is the door to the uh, to the uh, shop? Well, it's not far away. It's right there. The answer on this is going to be almost always zero feet uh, because you're trying to have the retail areas feel dense, feel exciting. You want, uh, as a city, they want to have the retail, you go from one to the next, so you're encouraging people to be able to go from you know one easily and go to the next. So the idea of the density, the idea of coming right up to the street edge, the reason that you picture that in your head uh, when you think of a, an urban setting and a retail like a shop, uh, the reason you picture that door being right on the sidewalk is because that's how zoning codes work, is that in that kind of setting, it's very likely that that's going to be a zero foot setback. Uh, and that means that most people are going to push forward and be right there uh, at that sidewalk and get that sense of excitement. And for, from the city standpoint and from the retailer standpoint, also hopefully for them, get a sort of sense of economic development kind of going that one store helps the other and they they kind of create shopping districts. Can you imagine, can you, can you picture uh, uh, where there's a setback that's bigger than that? Absolutely. There are tons of places in lots of different cities where they started maybe as residential, but then for one reason or another have become uh, 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 retail areas. Um, and so they're kind of stuck with the old uh, setbacks. Um, you know, that happens all the time, but it's not the rule and it's not the way that they would do it if they were starting from scratch. So a typical answer to that would be zero feet. Now, Mike, would you say that this is more of one of those kind of trying to make a point kind of ones or, um, or yeah. a fair one, a sort of a fair game question? No, this is absolutely, yeah, thanks for reminding me. Yeah, this is absolutely something that is more about trying to make a point uh, than this is, um, it would be fairly unusual for them to, for such a speculative type question to ask uh, like this. It would have more information and it might be like uh, in the actual exam, it might be more like uh, here's some information about a site and here's a piece of the zoning code and here's a site plan. Uh, where do you think the front wall of the building is going to be? Or where, you know, where's the, the front setback? And you would have to negotiate your way through the zoning code and through the site plan and through the, the question, the base question and, you know, a few other pieces of uh, information to be able to figure out where that would go. Uh, so I'm, yeah, I'm using this more as an opportunity to sort of get across the idea that the zoning codes are tools with a purpose. And that the purpose has, there's many different purposes, but you'll find that there is purpose behind these things. They are about setting a, a scale and density, setting a, a sort of logical type of interaction. Uh, so certain kinds of spaces get spread far apart. Other kinds of spaces, they're expected to be very, very close and dense. Uh, the scale uh, through FAR and through uh, uh, height restrictions and things like that is also discussed through this and changes through districts. So you're you're really create you're using the zoning code to create the desired effect in the city, and that we as architects are just sort of trying to understand what they are allowing and expecting us to do. And if we have a better idea, then we go back to the PUD. If we have uh, 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 subtly different ideas, we'd use variances and things like that. But generally, we're trying to fit our projects into the sort of game plan that the local municipality has. And this is just sort of talking about that.